Hello and welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. I'm excited to share with you today a recent conference where Beth Moore, Christine Kane, and myself had the opportunity to answer some personal questions on how God can heal our wounded souls. Be encouraged as you watch this today. All right, well, I'll tell you, we are very blessed to have these lovely three women together with us in the same room, lovely and crazy and talented and blessed. So would you please welcome Joyce, Beth, and Christine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm right. liking this because if I don't want to answer anything, I can just tell one of them to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on up here. There's your camera if you want to look at them or you can look at them, whatever you like. Tell us your name. China. And China, what's your question? So, hello ladies. Hello. Hi China. <laughs> when you are, have been blessed for your purpose and your destiny to have been revealed to you, you know, when you're on your path, the devil pulls anything and everything is like Abraham in the hedge. He's going to attack everything. When you feel that everyone you love and everything that's close to you is being pulled away from you, how do you keep yourself encouraged? How do you remain focused? Um, what have you learned in your journeys that will just help myself and I'm sure thousands of other people in this arena stay the course? You know, there's a scripture in um, Isaiah, I think it's, 222 that talks about how God will remove the props out from under us and we had a little uh, twig of a tree in our yard one time and it was starting to grow crooked which to me that represents like a baby Christian you know and so we had to put we put sticks around it propping it up to keep it growing straight and I think when we're babies in Christ and especially babies and chasing our dream that a lot of times God will give us props. He'll give us people around us that kind of keep us propped up and they keep us encouraged. And, you know, they've always got the right word for us and they always know the right scripture. But eventually he wants us to be rooted and grounded in him. That's right. So I found in my life that the time came when God removed all those props. And I had to learn how to stand strong in him. And so sometimes what we think is the enemy messing with us, which he certainly can do and does. Sometimes it just takes a little deeper trust to say, well, God, I don't know what you're doing here, but I believe it's going to turn out good. You see, I think that the safest person in the world is the one who comes to the point where they know that whatever they need to do, they can do it with and in Christ. Even if there is nothing else, they can do it with and in him. So, what do you girls want to add? Um, you know, uh, I was thinking, I agree with that completely. And I was thinking about the words of the Apostle Paul at the very end of his life in his last letter when he was talking to Timothy saying, at my first defense no one appeared in my support. May they not be held accountable for it. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me dot 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 and I've thought so many times Joyce and Chris that so often God brings us to a place in our relationship with him where it has got to be so intensely the two of us right we're still loved um, we still have community but to get to the other side of perhaps what we are most called to do in our entire journeys with God Man, we have got to be where we can be strengthened by Jesus alone because it's coming out of that intimacy and all of us are going to tend to really prefer that Jesus loves on us and speaks to us through someone we can touch and, and see. But man, he's weaning us continually right. so that we will be um, strengthened by him and that intimacy, that bond will be made. Amen. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Hi. Beth. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much, Joyce, for writing the book, Battlefield of the Mind. It yes. helped me so much. <laughs> My question is, as I read books by you, Joyce, and 
you other ladies, I realized that I got a lot of work. <laughs> As a leader, how much should I, should my soul mature before I answer the call? Oh. Well, <laughs> Lord have mercy. When I started teaching, I was blowing smoke in everybody's face and sitting in short shorts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, I was sitting. I would sit in my living room with shorts as short as I could get them, and just puffing away while I was teaching the Bible. And. Uh, all I can say, honey, is God not only knows where you're at, He knows where you will be. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not suggesting that anybody be a bad example. I don't think that, you know, we need a lot of wounded healers out there running around. But God certainly didn't loose me on the world. He let me teach 20 people for five years, and I got to practice on them. So I would say... Ask God to open a door that you would be mature enough to walk That's through good. now That's good. and start getting some experience. Yes. And then yes. each thing that God deals with you about, which there'll be many, he still deals with all of us every day. Each thing that God deals with you about, you walk through that with him, you work through that with him, and then you let him promote you to the next level when he knows the time is right. I'll tell you how I pray. I don't pray like I used to. I used to pray, God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that, make my ministry grow. God, make my ministry grow. Now I pray, God, please don't ever give me anything that I cannot handle and keep you first in my life. Thank you, Lord. That's so if right. you pray that, you won't That's get right. in trouble. That's good. All right, we've got another question for you, honey. What's your name? Bailey. How old are you, Bailey? 10. You are a brave 10-year-old. We're glad you're here. What's your question? Um, how do you get over use, losing a special person, like a family member? Bailey, I'm so glad you asked that question. And I'm so sorry, because there's some reason why you asked that question that is very, very tender in, in my heart. And I am so sorry that you even had to ask it. But I'm going to tell you that God is so faithful. And what I do know is that our tears and our grief, our, um, our sorrow is safe with Him. Yes. Uh, that we do get to work through and and cry and mourn when we lose someone because he knows how hard it is. There's this wonderful scene in John chapter 11 when he's watching his good friends Mary and Martha so grief-stricken over their brother Lazarus and he knows he's going to raise him from the dead but he's still just heartbroken watching the wages of, of death, watching the pain that it causes and you know what else? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that the very last enemy that Jesus is going to fight. The very last thing that he will defeat is death. I mean, he hates death more than he hates the devil. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Death. So he gets it in every way. He knows that loss the Father gave his one and only son. So you take time with him. You know what else? You talk a lot about it to him. You also feel like you can find some people that you can talk to uh, face to face. Talk it out. The, what the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is that we're just not to grieve as a hopeless person grieves. That if we, if they are in Christ, we know that we're going to see them again. Right. And it'll just be a very, very little while in, in the whole scope of eternity. So talk it out and, and, and grieve and also don't feel guilty when you also feel like laughing about something. That's a mercy and a grief. Right on up here. All right. What's your name? My name is Wendy. Wendy, what's your question? I've been following y'all for a long time, and without y'all, I couldn't have been stayed on this journey mm. with your teaching. Uh, I would like to know when you know that you are healed from, you know, like you was just talking about grief. 
I had a journey um, for the last past seven years of everybody close to me in my life died. But I know that I grieve without, I, I don't grieve without hope. Because they were saved but at certain times like their anniversary death my daughter my husband my mom my grandma and there are days that I feel alone but I know I'm not alone yes. something that I've that I've learned in my life that maybe will help you you know you said you said you know and then you said but sometimes I feel and we all go through that but I think that what we know that we know that we know is so much more valuable than what we feel you know we all go through these times where we, we want to feel God's presence or when we pray we're like well it, it's such a good prayer day if you feel Jesus all over the place and you feel like he hears you but then what do you do when you have those days <clears throat> where you you don't feel his presence and I don't know exactly when it happened to me, I guess when your faith gets deep enough, but I came to a point where I don't even really try to sit around and ponder, do I feel God's presence? Because now I know that he's with me good. all That's the good. time. And so you see, even on those days when you feel lonely, as long as you know, then that knowing is gonna get you beyond those days where you feel that way. Amen? Yes. You've got what you need. Yes. What's your name and your question? Angela. And I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Let's just start right there. Um, I'll tell you what. I got saved as a little kid. I've had a life about like yours and, and Christine's. And um, got accepted the Lord again in 2003 after a very long life of drug addiction and a
abuse on into my adulthood. Um, the last two years, I've had a lot of health issues and kind of got into myself because of the health issues. Um, and things started coming up that I thought God had healed me from. They started, they, little things like that my husband or my kids or some, it would just trigger some childhood memories. And they just started coming out. And it was like there was a, there's a root in there. There's a big root in there. And it's, it's still in there, although I thought it was gone. Um, and what I've done lately is I've gotten outside of myself, which is what Joyce would definitely say in her thousand hours of teaching tapes. And I've started ministering again. So I am feeling better. But I am on some anxiety and panic medication. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it um, stifles the Holy Spirit in me. So is your question how to help dig out that root? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That'd be it. One of you girls want to take it? or? Well, I, I want to say this for myself, and I'll let my sisters uh, speak to it, too, if they have a, a different answer. But I would not even begin to touch the matter of, uh, of medication because that is way outside my league. And... Uh, and so I would leave that to a, a good physician and to a, the leadership of the Holy Spirit um, in you. But I would like to speak to talking about that root. I, I think that it's not um, a terrible thing to realize that sometimes God does do things in seasons and in, in part that right. we may not, might not be ready in that season to go all the way down and under. But I'm going to tell you this. Um, I love to pray Matthew 15, 13, Matthew 15, 13, and it's where Jesus says, every plant that my heavenly... Father has not planted will be rooted up and I, I love to pray that over my life and over my children and over my loved ones that Lord whatever has gotten planted in us that was not planted in us by our Heavenly Father you pull it up by the roots you pull it up because we don't want it we don't want it so if that helps I love praying scripture and that's my verse that's my turn to verse for that concept Chris the only thing I would say about the medication, where'd she go? Okay. Don't ever feel guilty or bad or less than because you're needing to take medication. I agree with that. Sometimes. I agree. I don't know why it is, but for some reason, people seem to think that taking something for your, your nerves is a lot different than taking something for your arm if it hurts. I mean... Your nerves are a part of you just like your arms and your legs and everything else. And sometimes they get damaged through a lot of overactivity. And just because you're in a season of your life where you're needing that right now, that doesn't mean that you will need that That's forever. But it is very important that you don't feel bad and feel guilty about it. And trust God that if issues are coming up again, that there's something else that God is going to do there that's going to work out good. And the main thing I would tell you is don't worry about it. I'll tell you what happens when you don't feel good. There's no time that we are more vulnerable to the enemy than when we've been sick. There's no time, but there's no quicker way for me to not walk in the fruit of the Spirit than to feel really bad or be so stinking tired I can hardly think. And so if you take those things into account that you've not been having...
in good health and you've been dealing with that, you're probably doing a whole lot better than what you think you are. So you just keep on keeping on and you'll be back the whole full tilt pretty soon. All right, what's your name and your question? Hi, I'm Dawn. And basically, I feel like I was born with no self-confidence, and I am ready to have some, and I was wanting some advice on how in the world do you get it? Chris. Chris. <laughs> Good question. You know, uh, you probably, that's probably most people's stories, because if, even if they feel they haven't been born with it, most have had it knocked out of them um, by the time they get to kindergarten. That's right. So that would be the... <laughs> It normally happens like that. And I would say for any of us, that would be uh, the journey that we're on. Number one, you're starting really well. You've positioned yourself in a place where God can speak to you. So that's very, very powerful. I'm a big believer in conferences like this for that whole reason. Um, and of course, you know, I'm a big believer in resources like books and Bible studies because the more words you can get, the only way you can get transformed is by being transformed. The only way you get transformed is by going through the process. Most people right. want to be zapped, healed and whole, but it takes a process for all of us. Um, none of us just went out on one altar call, someone spat on us, we got back up and went, whew, I'm healed and confident, praise be unto the Lord. You know, uh, people would like to think that that's the case, but it is, and I need you to hear me, ongoing. I'm 50 years old and every single day, what we teach you, we have to live because we are all only ever one thought away from beginning to unravel and go back. And so um, being in the Word, getting the Scripture, choosing to cut off some things that knock your confidence, that's what you've got to start to do. So replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. But I'm not going to jump in too much. Just stick around till the end of the conference. By the end of tomorrow's session, if you don't have 10... Step one. Wake up, brother, go and rise the sun. Step two. Get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, but in circulation One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought and some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Life is easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo Sometimes I die, other times I'm barely breathing, yo I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison the ride, uh. Head full of flops, so here come the clouds, uh. Don't ever stop, unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh. Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken I got patience, one day at a time It's how you operate a cadence So flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit because it's temptation I know that I like to do it cause it's sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. on how you're going to take the next steps seriously.
I don't know how to help you. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to give you one piece of advice. Don't ever say again, I don't have any confidence, and I want to know how I can get some. <laughs> If Christ is living in you, you've got all the confidence that you need. And you need to start by believing that. And the more you believe it, the more it's going to manifest in your life. In God's economy, we believe and then we see. We don't wait to see before we believe. So you start saying, even before you feel it, you start saying, I am a confident woman. Jesus lives in me and I can do whatever I need to do through Christ. Well, now remember, if Christ is living in you, then you have all the confidence you need. So say out loud, I can do whatever I need to do through Christ. You know, I pray that this has been a time of real encouragement for you. But we're offering you more word. I am very big on the word because the word is what has changed my life. There's nothing better to invest your money in than teaching about God's word good books, CDs, DVDs, anything that's going to keep feeding you the Word of God. So today we're offering you eight teachings on CD called The Path to God's Purpose. I think you're really going to love these. Not only are you going to get teaching from me, but Chris Kane, John Gray, Beth Moore, just lots of really good stuff. And so don't forget to order your CD series and don't forget to get your ticket today for the women's conference. Our early bird pricing is ending soon, so you're never going to get a better deal than right now. We sure want to see you there. God bless you.
what's left is right Chasing stars and holding you I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Keep the sky on your mind 